Hello, it's Claire again, and I'm at Frank Nut Sewing Machines, and I'm going to show you how to sew on soluble fabric. It's an introduction to soluble fabric, and I've actually got a variety of soluble fabrics here, because I think it can be a bit confusing when you try to buy soluble fabric. They look quite different, and they have actually got quite different qualities. So I'll just give you a little introduction as to different ones. We've got a very flimsy one here, and that's called Avalon, and that's often used double. We've got this one here, which is Solufleece or Aquasol. It's a little bit sturdier. It's often referred to as a nappy liner, if you can still buy nappy liners. And this one over here is a bit thicker, and he's Romeo. So they're all quite different, and I know people have their favourites, and also people find that some are quite tricky to use. My two favourite out of these are these two and that's actually because they wash away really easily and you're not left with a quite a gloopy residue. So um, as I say these two are my favourite but I do like this one. We do use this occasionally and it has, has its purpose but uh, I'm going to concentrate on these two for now. If you were making a light coloured flower, you would actually find it quite tricky to use this particular one, for example, because it is actually white. So if you were stitching with white thread on that, you would find that quite tricky. But using white thread on this one, you could actually see more clearly what you were doing. This one can tear. As I say, it is used double, and this one's a bit more forgiving, so I usually teach on this one. So I'm going to put some of this in a hoop, because what I'm going to show you is this lovely flower here, how to actually make that flower. It's very effective and quite simple to do, so I'm going to take you through the stages. With this soluble, I'm actually going to put it in a hoop. So I have slackened my screw a little bit and I'm going to place my soluble fabric over the hoop, pop my inner hoop in and then I'm going to pull it up. Now I like to pull all my fabrics up at right angles because actually it actually makes sure that the inner hoop doesn't flip out. Okay and then you can just tighten that screw. If you find it a bit tricky with your hands, then obviously use a screwdriver, but that is nice and tight. This one has an advantage as well, that you can actually draw on it. So if I wanted to, I could draw my flower, but I've actually got a pattern. Quite fond of using patterns, and you can just pin it to your hoop. So it's just a paper pattern, and I'm just going to pin it to my hoop. And now I've got that all nice and tight in the hoop, how do I pin the pattern without making this all baggy? Well, I just tend to push it off like that, get my pin, and just put my finger underneath, and we're in, okay? So I've set my machine all up for free machine embroidery. We're on straight stitch, and I'm using Madeira thread. It's this lovely viscose thread, which is perfect for machine embroidery. It just runs really smoothly through the machine and it has got a lovely sheen so I, I really like it and I love the colour. Bit of a pink girl so I hope you are. Because it's a soluble, uh, we're sewing on soluble rather, and when we wash it we want to be able to see both sides. I've actually got pink thread in the bobbin. You don't have to have the same colour, you get some lovely effects if you have a different colour, but uh, I have actually put pink in the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is start off doing my double lift so I can get my hoop underneath my foot and I'm just going to bring my bobbin thread up, so needle in, needle up, pull my bobbin thread up, pop my needle back in and lower my presser foot and then I'm ready to go round. So this is free machine embroidery, so I'm controlling my stitch length by how fast I move the hoop and how fast I go with my foot. It's that funny old feeling. But uh, off we go, and it's on straight stitch, and I'm just ideally going to sew around the outside edge of this pattern. Oops. So I've got different boots on, so that was a bit of a speedy start there, so bear with me. And once you've done a few stitches, 
you can cut those ends off. So I'm just going to go in there and cut those off. And I'm just sewing around, around the outside edge of the flower. Okay, I can turn my work round so I can see where I'm going. And I've actually got the open toed free machine embroidery foot on, and it's perfect for this kind of work because you can actually see where you're going. If you're curious to know what needle I've got in there, it's just a size 80, universal, because this stuff isn't very thick. So off we go, we're just going round. So I'm not going too mad. I'm moving my hoop quite slowly. As I say, turn it round so you can see where you're going. Some people say to me, what about using freezer paper? You could iron that on and then obviously stitch around that. Yep, that's something you could try. I just have paper pattern, so I just quickly use these. So, lucky so far, I haven't punctured the paper, but that's the other good thing. If you do hit the paper, you can actually tear it away quite easily, so it's not the end of the world. Oops. So just moving it round. It's quite a good idea when you're doing one for the first time. If you have quite a bold colour, then you can actually see where you're going and what you're doing. There we go, so I'm back to the beginning again. So I'm going over where I started. And then what you can do is just take your paper pattern away and then I'm ready to fill in. Now, when you sew on soluble, the thing to remember is that all your stitches need to link up because when you wash the piece, if they're not all interlinked, you'll get some big holes. So if I just bring this back to you here and you can see, you can see I've got some bigger holes in some of the petals and that's possibly where I didn't do maybe enough stitches. Okay, so it is quite crucial and it's getting the balance really between stitching it so that it's well stitched but not too dense so that you don't actually have a nice lacy effect. Okay. Now, what I've done here and what I'm going to do on this sample is just pop a piece of fabric in the middle because I think that's quite nice to actually add a little bit of fabric. You can add absolutely anything you like. A bit of silk, a bit of organza, a bit of velvet, a bit of cotton. It could be plain, it could be patterned anything you like. Those of you who know me have know, know that I've actually stitched over a Waitrose carrier bag, so anything is possible. But today we're going to use silk. So I'm going to pop a bit of silk, a bit of Dupion. I'm just going to place that in the middle. So, and I'm first of all just going to anchor that down. So I'm just going to do a few stitches. Oops. Just anchor it down. I'm going around in a bit of a circular fashion. I think it just looks less harsh than doing a straight stitch. Now sometimes when I do this people say to me, how do you get that control? I don't know if you can hear but I'm going quite a steady pace with my foot but I'm moving my hoop ever so slowly. Now I'm literally just going to go from side to side filling in the hoop, uh, sorry, filling in the petal uh, and going up to and touching my edge. If I didn't do that, when I wash it, it wouldn't have that lovely defined shape. So as I've gone to the bother of actually stitching my outline, it is quite crucial that I actually go up to and touch the edge of the flower. So. I'm actually going over the edge. Okay, and then I'm just going to, if 
I just slow down for you, just really so that you can see what I'm doing? There you are, I'm into the previous sort of loops and circles. So it really is, it's a bit like when you draw knitting, it's all sort of interlinked really. And I'm just going to go from side to side there, making sure that I'm happy that it's all interlinked. extra stitches where the silk is because when I wash it what I don't want to happen I don't want the silk to pull away from the stitching so I've just done a few more but there we are already I've done one petal and if you look really closely you can see I have touched the edge so when I wash that it will keep its shape so I just need to do all the other four petals so I'm just going to do that now so that's me just coming up to the last petal all done so as you can see we've stitched all the petals and now I just want to do a few more stitches just on the silk I don't need to make sure that they all interlink this time because the silk's actually underneath but I just think a little bit of stitching on there will be quite nice so I'm just going to just do a little bit of stitching just done a few wiggles but if you wanted to be more precise and do a, a design uh, something linear you could do but I'm just going with a few wiggles there we go and we're all done so I'm just going to cut that come out and it's quite a good idea actually if you look on the white of the bed of your machine you can see if you've actually missed anywhere and I haven't I have actually got all the stitches interlinked and they are all touching the sides so I'm fairly confident that that's not going to fall apart but you know what they say the proof of the pudding is in the washing so let's have a go so just to get that out no need to unscrew you just push the inner hoop out I do that all the time and with this one because it is substantial it won't really tear away so you need to just give it a trim and cut the surplus away because then this is all wasted that's why it's a good idea to choose a hoop that's appropriate to the size of the design that you're doing because otherwise you don't want to waste too much of this so I'm just going to cut quite quickly And then we're ready to wash it out. So I'm just going to switch that off and push that back. Oops. And then just get my bowl of water. So I've got a bit of polystyrene. I think it's a really good idea to allow your, whatever you're working on, just to, to drip dry naturally. I mean, if you are in a hurry, a hair dryer can help, but I don't like to blot it because I actually like to keep a little bit of the residue of the soluble in the piece and that gives it its stiffness. So a bit of polystyrene. And I've got a bowl of tepid water here. Tepid is absolutely fine. The only time I would insist that you use completely stone cold water is if the silk that you've used has a piece uh, or has some embroidery on it for example James Hare does some beautiful embroidered silks and brocades now I did a commission and I ruined it by actually washing it out in tepid water the the color ran in the, the threads so I had to make the, all the petals again so don't make that mistake, use completely cold water for that. But this is tepid, this is absolutely fine, and I dunk the piece. Now, I dunk the piece, give it a little bit of a rub, and you can see that that has, all the bits have disappeared. Now, at the moment, it doesn't feel very sticky, but I know with this particular soluble that it will feel a little bit stickier in a minute. So I'm just making sure that we're there and I'm just kind of feeling it I know it sounds a bit difficult and I can't give you the feeling of the video but um, it's still a little bit sticky 
So I'm just gauging just how sticky it is, whether I need to dunk it again or whether I'm happy with that. So I'm just squeezing. It's a good idea just to squeeze it from there. So it, has, it is actually just a little bit sticky. So I would just do one more dunk and then pin it to my polystyrene. If I were doing lots of separate petals, I would dunk them one at a time. I wouldn't throw them all in because you then can't control how to actually keep the level of stickiness or the, the, the soluble residue in the piece. So I would leave that strip dry and once it's dry I would then iron it. Iron it on the reverse under a piece of baking parchment or greaseproof paper. Then you can then just decorate it and I've just stitched a few little seed beads size 11s here and some four millimeter Swarovski bicones so it just gives you a lovely little twinkly twinkly brooch you could pop it anywhere really but uh, there's nothing to stop you stitching any shape I've used a petal oh, sorry a flower here but you can actually use a butterfly shape you could make a really small butterfly so there's nothing to stop you doing any shape that you like and I think you can see in this one I've incorporated some lace, some bought lace. So if you were going to a wedding or having your wedding dress made and you had some little off cuts of the lace you could incorporate those into butterflies. So now you know the technique, there's nothing to stop you. But if you want to come along to courses, I do courses here at Frank Nuts and you can either comment below and I can give you some dates or you can look me up on my website which is www.clairemuir.co.uk So if you like the video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and see you again soon.